is Ina, in with you in the fight back. And today I'm reviewing Spartacus by Louis Grassigier. Gibbon's novel, written in 1933, retells the famous story of Spartacus that we're all familiar with, about suffering and torture gladiator slaves led by Spartacus, who rebel against their Roman masters, and for three years seek to establish a new society of no slave, no master. A new where man is uplifted, where all have dignity. And ultimately this vision is crushed and the slaves are defeated by the Romans and their survivors are crucified along the Appian Way as an act of vengeance to make sure that no rebel against the power of Rome in a society built upon master and slave. Although Gibbons is retelling this story, his interpretation is vastly different than probably the story you are familiar with. For instance, most of you probably have come to know Spartacus through the movie starring Kirk Douglas. And if you've dug a little deeper, you've probably read the novel by Howard Fast, which the movie is based upon. Gibbons is telling a slightly different story. Yes, his story is based upon historical fact. He relies upon Roman historians. But he makes up facts and he kind of nudges things to tell an intriguing story. But he's concerned not so much with the debates of Rome, but with civilization itself civilization of masters and slaves, the Romans, who have built society, who, en who enjoy their leisure to create great works of art and architecture and writing. He's concerned with those who really built Rome, the slaves, those who suffered and toiled and suffered great humanity. He's not concerned with the great rhetoric of Crassus or the Senate. And that's a great difference you'll see between Gibbons and Fast is Gibbon doesn't show us the Roman perspective at all. In fact, the Romans are merely called masters. It's those who have suffered under them that Gibbon is concerned with. He's concerned with the rebellion of Spartacus, how it moves, how it develops, how the slaves perceive things. We see various perspectives of these slaves. We see Cleon, the central perspective for the reader, an educated eunuch who seeks to reestablish Plato's republic upon earth. We see Gershom, a Jewish slave, torn by his petty divisions and jealousies. And this slave rebellion is not some idealized portrait of an egalitarian society. There are ranks, the slaves are driven by survival, sex, loyalty, ethnic divisions. Yet, if that was all this story was purporting to show, it wouldn't be Spartacus. And that brings me to the second difference between this novel and that of Howard Fast is the character of Spartacus. Those of you who have seen the movie or read the book should probably get the impression that Spartacus is largely formed as a static character. He already has his vision of no slaves and no masters where all is held in common. Spartacus here is not like that. He's been hardened and toughened, yes, but he's driven by no ideals, just anger and hate. He wants sex and gratification. People are loyal to him but he's ruthless and cruel at times. Yet, as the slaves fight in their rebellion, as they struggle against the might and power of Rome, Spartacus's vision grows. He begins to see that it's not merely enough to survive, that what they need to do is to push past the limits that Rome has set upon them, to see that, we, that they shouldn't be building a society where the slaves are on top and the Romans are on bottom but a society with no slaves, no masters, a society where man is uplifted, where there is no debasement and where there's justice for all, a better, more noble society. And Spartacus rejects Rome in the person of Cleon with his education, his vision of recreating Plato's Republic. He wants to do something new, something that had really never been done before. His Spartacus and his ideals are defeated. The survivors are crucified along the Appian Way, and it's seemingly Spartacus's vision had died. Yet Gibbon is not just showing an ancient slave world. He's not just telling us an intriguing story about something that happened long ago that does not concern us. He's showing us something that is quite contemporary. Gibbon knows from his experience of living in the British Empire and in modern capitalism that society is built by its Spartacuses, its workers, its slaves. 
Those who toiled while their masters could enjoy leisure. They could build great works. And seemingly these slaves and workers, in their millions and tens of millions, were unknown, and they seemingly accepted their fate. Yet, that is not always so. There have been modern Spartacuses. John Brown, Toussaint Louverture, Rosa Luxemburg, Che Guevara, to name a few. And granted, their visions have ultimately been defeated. They've suffered, and it's seemingly the society of masters and slaves has continued. And that spark of Spartacus has continued. And he, Gibbons reminds us of these rebel, rebellions that had come and had been defeated. These Spartacuses that have been produced by societies, past and present. And yes, their rebellions have failed. But in asking us to look at an, one of the first great rebellions against oppression, Gibbons is asking us to look not in its failure, not at its, not at the suffering necessarily, but to look past that to the vision these rebels fought for, that may have been defeated, but is still yet to come. This is Ina in with you in the fight back. Till next time.